In this lab, we will be looking at enthalpy of reaction and Hess's law. So you can read the background information that goes into how we'll be using delta H and enthalpy changes to uh, then look at Hess's law and determine the delta H of an overall reaction. So you can read through the background information on pages one and two, and then you can see the purpose of the experiment. It's just to verify Hess's law. So we'll be using three acid-base reactions that actually equal the two reactions uh, manipulated. So we'll be using calorimetry in order to verify Hess's law. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with part one of the lab, which is to determine the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So I have everything set up here. I have a calorimeter that's two nested styrofoam cups and it's in a beaker just to keep it stable and sturdy. And I also have the lid as well as thermometers and a stir station that we will use. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to measure 50 milliliters of distilled water and I'm gonna put it in the calorimeter. So I'll go ahead and get it as close to 50 as I can. And then I'll use the meniscus so if we take a look at the graduated cylinder, and I know it's tilted, so the meniscus is, is changing, but when I look at it right on, I have exactly 50.0 milliliters of distilled water. So I'll go ahead and add that to the coffee cup calorimeter. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the calorimeter on the stirrer. So the stir station has a magnet that actually will spin, and so I won't have to worry about using a stir bar to stir. So I'll go ahead and put this on the stir station and I will add this small magnetic stir bar into the calorimeter. So I'll go ahead and have it start spinning slowly. So now the magnet's stirring and the, the magnetic bar is stirring in the calorimeter. So I'm gonna measure and record the temperature of the water that is in the calorimeter. So again, you always want to make sure that the temperature is stable on the thermometer. And then I'll go ahead and I'll record the temperature. You wanna make sure that the thermometer is not getting hit by the magnetic stir bar. So we have 22.3 degrees Celsius in the calorimeter. So you can record 22.3 degrees Celsius in your part one data table. So we are heating distilled water, and we want it to get up to 70 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna monitor the temperature using the thermometer. Again, I don't wanna just let it sit on the bottom because what that's gonna do is that's going to really get the temperature of the glass and not necessarily the water. So it's still not quite yet at 50 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer and then we will move on to the next part of the lab. So the hot water bath is slightly above 70 degrees Celsius, which is okay because I'm not gonna record the temperature until it goes into the graduated cylinder. And so I'm now going to measure 50 milliliters of this distilled water into the graduated cylinder, and then I will record the temperature once it's in the graduated cylinder. So I'm gonna use hot hands. I'm gonna add the distilled water. So that again, it's exactly 50.0 milliliters. So now that the hot water is in the graduated cylinder, I'll go ahead and I'll take the temperature. So I'm gonna let it climb until it stays steady. Hopefully it's somewhere around 70 degrees. So it is 68.8 degrees Celsius. Again, 68.8 degrees Celsius, so that's going to go in your data table for part one. Now we're gonna do this quickly. So I'm gonna pour the hot water into the calorimeter and I'm gonna cover stir using the stir bar and I'm gonna record the temperature every 20 seconds for a total of three minutes. So 
So I'm gonna allow it to stir for me. And every 20 seconds for three minutes, I'll go ahead and let you know what the temperature is. So 43.4 degrees Celsius after 20 seconds. The top of the lid is also getting warm. It is 43.3 degrees Celsius after 40 seconds. 43.2 degrees Celsius after one minute. 43.1 degrees Celsius after 80 seconds or one minute and 20 seconds. 43.0 degrees Celsius after 100 seconds. 42.9 degrees Celsius after 120 seconds. 42.8 degrees Celsius after 140 seconds. 42.7 degrees Celsius after 160 seconds and 42.6 degrees Celsius after three minutes. So make sure you get all of that recorded in your part one data table. So now we're gonna move on to part two of the lab and parts, part two is where we're looking at three reactions to determine the heat of reaction, delta H reaction. And we have three different reactions we're gonna be looking at. The first one being HCl and NaOH. And so what I did is I measured out 50 milliliters of two molar NaOH. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put it into the calorimeter. So I'm gonna pour the hydrochloric acid into the calorimeter. Make sure I get all of the HCl out of the graduated cylinder. It was exactly 50 milliliters. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn on the stir bar. So I want it slightly stirring. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record the temperature of the HCl, and this will go in our part two data table. So I'll go ahead and I'll put this in. So the HCl is 23.2 degrees Celsius. So again, 23.2 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna give it a quick rinse with distilled water. Since we are performing reactions, we wanna make sure that there's no contamination. And then what I've done is I've measured out 50.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and record the temperature while it's in the graduated cylinder. And so the sodium hydroxide, while it's in the graduated cylinder, is 24.9 degrees Celsius. So 24.9 degrees Celsius for the sodium hydroxide. So the stir bar is in, slowly stirring. I'm gonna go ahead and get the lid ready with the thermometer. And then I'm gonna quickly add the sodium hydroxide. I'm gonna insert the thermometer and every 20 seconds, just like part one, we're gonna go ahead and record the temperature. So initially I noticed that the temperature did rise and after 20 seconds it's 35.9 degrees Celsius. After 40 seconds it's 35.8 degrees Celsius. After 60 seconds it is 35.7 degrees Celsius. After 80 seconds, it's 35.7 degrees Celsius. After 100 seconds, 35.6 degrees Celsius. After 120 seconds, 35.5 degrees Celsius. 140 seconds, it's 35.5 degrees Celsius. After 160 seconds, it's 35.4 degrees Celsius. 
and after 180 seconds, it is 35.4 degrees Celsius. So I'll go ahead and I will turn off the stir bar. I'll remove the thermometer. You always wanna rinse the thermometer in between reactions or in between trials, as well as at the end of the reaction. Take the lid off of the calorimeter so it just is a clear solution. To remove magnetic stir bars, we actually have a wand that we can actually remove the stir bar. Um, the product of this reaction can go down the drain and I'll also rinse the stir bar with distilled. Again, we don't want any contamination. Let that dry. And then what we'll do is we will get ready for reaction two, which is ammonium chloride and sodium hydroxide. So now we will move on to reaction two, which is ammonium chloride and sodium hydroxide. So we're gonna re just repeat steps one through eight of reaction one, but we're just gonna use reaction two instead. So I'm gonna start by recording the temperature of the ammonium chloride or NH4Cl. So the NH4Cl has an initial temperature of 22.9 degrees Celsius. So 22.9 degrees Celsius is my initial temperature of the ammonium chloride. And I'll go ahead and I will add that into the calorimeter. And I will have the stir bar stirring that. Then I have my sodium hydroxide, so I will do the same thing. Temperature of the sodium hydroxide, 23.6 degrees Celsius. So initial temperature of sodium hydroxide, 23.6 degrees Celsius. I will go ahead and get everything ready. I will quickly add, and then we will measure the temperature every 20 seconds for a total of three minutes. So after three minutes, we'll go ahead and turn off the stir bar. We will remove the thermometer, give that a rinse before, take the lid off. Again, we'll remove the magnetic stir bar using the wand. We'll make sure that everything is rinsed before the next reaction, and then we'll go ahead and do reaction three. So for the last reaction, we have 50 milliliters of HCl and 50 milliliters of NH3 or NH4OH. So ammonia, which is NH3, is the same thing as ammonium hydroxide, which is NH4OH. So in your lab handout, it says NH3. Um, they're, they're essentially the same thing. So I'm gonna start by taking the temperature of the hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid has an initial temperature of 23.1 degrees Celsius. So hydrochloric acid, 23.1 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that into the calorimeter. I'm also going to add the magnetic stir bar into the hydrochloric acid and get that stirring. Now we'll go ahead and take the initial temperature of the ammonia. So ammonia is in window cleaner. So it has a very potent smell. It's also a very common base. So ammonia, NH4OH or NH3, has an initial temperature of 22.9 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna give that a really good wash after. I'm gonna just rinse it for now. But after we're done, it's gonna get washed really well. I'm gonna get this ready to go. Once I add everything, then we're gonna take the temperature every 20 seconds for three minutes. So we notice initially the temperature rises quite a bit. 
So we'll go ahead and take the temperature every 20 seconds for three minutes. So after the reaction is over, after three minutes, we'll go ahead and turn off the stir station. So we will do a full cleanup. I will rinse everything really well. I'll wash the glassware, but I just wanted to give you a quick heads up with all of your data tables. You're gonna have a lot of data tables in this lab. So I just wanna make sure that you remember when you are working in uh, your data tables, make sure that every data table has a number and a title. So for example, example, data table one, part one, and then for part two, we have that data. This data table might say data table two, part two, reaction one, right? And so on, you would have data table uh, three, part two, reaction two, so on. So you always wanna make sure everything is clearly labeled. Our data and observation section for this lab will be pretty long.